Okay, right. Luke. Right, okay, I think I got the most important part. This is all of the insulation that we need for around the house. Now, I have a question. I have face on mine, mm -hmm. and this is the same thing you're putting over there, which yes. is the fiberglass. It's formaldehyde free. free. Why does mine have a face and yours does not? Yeah, you were working on an exterior wall, and we we're worried about vapor or water pushing through that wall. So that's a vapor barrier on the one wall that Mike and I are working on. That's an interior wall. On the other side of that, that's the master bedroom. We were worried oh. about soundproofing. Oh, okay, that's what you're the wrong doing. piece. Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> no, that Mike, makes a lot more sense. <laughs> Okay, well guess what? Welcome to a special edition of Between the Studs. We are so excited today because guess what? We get to be out in the field, helping out a little bit, <clears throat> kind of, and we get to talk about what our fun subject of insulation. Yeah, so obviously as you can tell, we are in the insulation stage. We passed our framing inspection, but drywall is being delivered right now. Our drywallers will be here tomorrow hanging the board. That's why I said, hey guys, I need all of you out here. We need to wrap up this insulation and we only get one shot at this. Okay, good job. Hey, one thing is you gotta be very, very safe, especially when you're dealing with fiberglass insulation. But my question is, Mike, we're <laughs> all covered up, everything, long sleeve shirts, we're wearing masks, you're nothing. You called me a sissy last week, <laughs> now I'm calling you a sissy this week. I, see this Hakuna Matata, no worries. Mike, you we're, know that fiberglass fine. is gonna get in your pores, in your lungs, you're gonna be it's coughing and itching Maybe yours, forever. mine are fine. Hey, we're, we're, let him, all right, all right, so yeah, that's yeah, his problem. Yep. Now, Lonnie, what are you okay. working? Oh, I'm sorry. Are you, are you tasting that? What are you doing? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm foaming around oh. these window cavities. I'm using a non-expanding foam. It's really critical that we address air infiltration around these cavities. Yeah, that's a very yeah. cr critical part because air can get blown in through all of those openings because we've obviously got a well-insulated wall here and then we cut windows in it. So we've got to make sure that gap between the framing and the windows is sealed up. By the way, it smells like vanilla. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't, don't eat it, please. It looks like All right, Elizabeth, okay. what are you working on? Well, I'm checking the perimeter of our house we have this blue foam sill sealer mm -hmm. underneath all of our borate treated plates to help with air infiltration yeah and that goes all the way around the house mm -hmm. so not only air infiltration leaves a little bit of insulation value but it also keeps insects from getting yes. into the house so this is another very crucial part that we have to make sure we get right and Tony, you got something else there too, right? Yeah, I'm gonna follow Elizabeth. I'm gonna be caulking everything onto the sill plate to make sure, once again, help with that bug infiltration and everything else. Yeah, and the air. Sometimes we use foam, sometimes we use caulk. There's already gonna be a tight gap there. You're gonna caulk that completely shut. So we actually do three layers. We do a bead of caulk, seal sealer, another bead of caulk, so it is completely sealed on that bottom plate. All right, Charity, you got a spray foam can too. What are you working on? Just like Lonnie, I'm going to run all the electrical outlets. Yeah, and then again, electrical outlet on an exterior wall is going to limit how much insulation we can get around there. So you're making sure that we've got the most amount we can get around there to make sure that that wall, especially that weak spot where that electrical outlet's gonna be well insulated. I'm on it. There's yeah. a lot of outlets, I got it. <laughs> Keep going, all right. So Taylor, what do you got? Fireplace. There's a lot of important components that go into the fireplace, and we need to make sure there's enough of a cavity here for the piping, insulated pipes. So just making sure all of this is buttoned up before we drywall. Yeah, a lot of people think insulation's only on the outside. We need to make sure because we've got a hot box in there that it's insulated well from any combustible materials. We've got a double wall insulated pipe there to again make sure that things stay at a nice temperature so there are no fires potentially down the road. Yep. Absolutely. Now Izzy. You've got a couple interesting things here. What do you got going on? Well, we've got our uh, light fixtures here. So these LED light fixtures, we've got to make sure that they're insulated as well. And the ones that we're using do. That's like the old style when they weren't very insulated and we had to take care of it being around it. Now these things come insulated, ready to go. Yeah, and you're talking any one of these that are up in an attic. So attic's going to be really cold or really hot depending yep. on the temperature. Then you could get condensation built up around this with that light. So this eliminates any of those condensations or any of those water spots that you may have. Absolutely. All right. You ready? Yeah, I think we're ready. Okay, okay. All right. ready? Just ready for. Uh, uh, okay, guys, let's get ready. We got to open the show up. Welcome to Between the Studs. We are Granite Ridge Builders, custom builders serving Northern Indiana, Northwest Ohio, and also parts of Southern Michigan. We have been building custom homes for almost two decades, and we're really passionate about what we do. So join us today as we explore the processes, the trends, and also tips that characterize today's new home. Thanks for watching. All right, guys, we gotta get the show started. <sighs> hey, welcome back. This is our 13th episode talking about this magnificent Monaco model. We are out here off of Coldwater Road in Shadow Creek. This is a 10,000 square foot home. We call it the modern European chateau architectural style. But guess what? I, can't, I bet you can't guess what we're gonna talk about today. Well, as you can see from the pre-open, and thank you all for your help for getting this house ready, we are in the insulation process of this home. 
And I don't want to admit that you guys were right, but I'm feeling pretty itchy right now. Oh, there we go. I got a little cortisone right, for you right here, dude. I don't want to know where you're going to put this, but um, <laughs> it's itchy. Oh, well, there we go. <laughs> well, I am super excited because, as Tony mentioned, this is 13th episode, but we're 200 episodes in between the studs, and we finally get to talk about what's literally between the studs. Yeah, that's between go. me and Tony. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Woo! Oh, okay. yeah, does that make us insulation? We're insulation. Yeah, we're insulation. Yeah, we're insulation. <laughs> Let's give a quick recap on where we've come so far with this model. So, six months ago, we broke ground on this amazing, beautiful home here, very close to Bicentennial Woods. I love to hike over there. It is mm -hmm. absolutely gorgeous. And the Willow Creek at backs up too, so we have a beautiful setting for our home. Well, first we poured the concrete for that walkout basement and for the garage, and then we started framing about two and a half months of all the stuff <laughs> yep. that you see now. Framing the walls, the roof, getting the shingles on the roof, all of that. And then we went into the rough mechanical stages. That's the heating, air conditioning, ventilation rough ends, the electrical rough ends, the plumbing rough ends, and even the rough ends for all the technology. And today we're finishing up one of those um, components, you might call it, or features that's invisible. The most important, I think, that's invisible, and that's the insulation. Tomorrow they're going to start drywalling. They're going to cover these walls. And we're going to be covering up that product that brings protection, energy efficiency, peace and quiet and comfort in a brand new home. And we're going to show you all of the techniques that we use to make sure that you have comfort and livability in this home. Now let's do this. Let's define insulation for everybody. How do we define that word? Insulation is a covering or material that is used to prevent the transference uh, of heat, energy, or sound. And I thought it would interest us. That can just be wire too. They put the material around mm -hmm. it so even our wire is insulated. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now Lana, you said that this is going to be invisible, but the savings and the benefits of it are just unbelievable what happens with this when it comes to installation, whether it is a fiberglass insulation, a blown in insulation, wool insulation, just everything that they put into this. And the neat thing about insulation, if you think about it, once it's put in, it takes no more energy, but it saves you yeah. a lot of energy. And most people know it does add comfort to your house as well and saves on your energy bills, as Tony Depker said. So this helps with the transfer, whether you're heating or cooling your home, it's going to help keep it more comfortable and save on those bills. Could be 20 up to 40 percent or even more. The best part is, too, it lasts a lifetime. Once you put it in, you are good to go. There's a bunch of other benefits that we can see with it as well. Um, we can help prevent pests, not pets, Izzy, <laughs> pests and insects, um, as well as it does help stop mold. And it helps stop mold because it helps with condensation in the house. We don't have rapid temperature swings, and that also helps keep your maintenance costs down in your house as well. And one of the best parts about this is the majority of the insulation we use is recyclable. Uh, it's made out of glass, plastic, newspaper, although nobody reads the newspaper except Tony, <laughs> so I'm not sure where they're getting the newspaper from. Uh, and a well-insulated home is going to protect the water pipes inside the home from freezing and potentially bursting and costing thousands of dollars. Another thing we take for granted when we think about insulation is the fact that insulation reduces fire. Oh, yeah. It is a retardant when it comes to helping us with fires. And being a firefighter for a decade, it, it really has made a difference for home safety when it comes to fires. Yeah. So really, in summary, it does a lot. In fact, insulation is probably the most important component, especially when you can't even see it, in a house. Here's what it does. It's energy efficient. It's cost effective. It soundproofs areas when you need it. It is comfortable. It's quiet in a house. So insulation is by far probably one of the most important products that we're ever going to put in a home. So it's not the studs, Tony, but it's what's between it's the studs. Between the studs. Oh, right, it's us oh, over God. here. So before we start going into the techniques that we've used to insulate the Monaco here, let's talk about some of the most common used materials in insulation and where we use them at in the house. You know, one of the most common was invented in the 1930s, and that is just the fiberglass insulation. This is actually made out of a molten glass. It's split into fibers. It's used as a loose fill. It can be put in between those studs. And uh, caution, Mike, uh, we really want to make sure this doesn't get into your lungs or too much on your hands. Even though mine are doing it right now, I may need to borrow some of that itching lotion right now. Thank you. Then there's also cellulose. This is basically recycled paper, usually newspaper, and it's very popular. We put this in almost every Granite Ridge builder's home attic, uh, 10, 12, 14 inches of it. And the exciting thing about this, in the 1970s, they figured out how to put a fire retardant in it, so it's become very, very popular in today's new home. 
And then there's also the spray foam, the polyurethane spray foam. We're going to use this around your windows, doors, outlets, switches, places like that where the wall bat insulation can't quite cover. And then there's structured foam board. This could be used on your walls or we use it on our concrete footers. This helps when we have freezing temperatures. Now, characteristics of some of the two most popular that we were talking about is um, this one here. So you can call it a blanket or bat or roll. Um, you're going to use it on the interior of the home. It's usually a lot of times pink, could be brown even. Um, it's going to be faced with either paper or maybe plastic is going to cover um, the wall area. So the uh, now that's when you're using it on an exterior um, wall. When you're using it throughout the inside of the house, it's a great sound barrier, especially between maybe a master and a great room or um, some maybe a laundry room to insulate that for sound. Kayla, what about the golf simulator maybe? <laughs> very, very important for that room. And the ceiling on that one too. Oh yeah. It's going to save some marriages doing that. <laughs> yep, for sure. Lonnie talked a little bit about the loose or blown in insulation. We use it in our attics about 12 inches usually in our attics. It's good for tight spots to get in there and again that has been the best technology that has come along is adding that fire retardant to it. It really does save homes and lives. Now, Charity, nobody believes me when I say it's made out of newspaper, that it will not burn. <laughs> it will char, but it yeah. won't yep. burn. It's so I brought weird. my uh -oh. propane torch in. Ooh. Charity, would you be willing uh -oh. to be the guinea pig for this? No. Uh, do you know how much hairspray is in there? <laughs> <laughs> okay. No. Oh, all right. We'll, we'll, do, we'll do the expendable uh, fire, <laughs> yeah. fireman here. How about Michael? All right. Let's do it. Uh, you guys might want to move up the front row. Getting out of the way, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Where are you guys going? Uh -huh. no, I told no. you it's not going to burn. No. I don't trust him, do you? <laughs> all right, Mike, you ready for this? Uh, okay, again, it's going to char, but it's not going to catch fire. Oh. Look, Whoa. puts itself Whoa. out every time. That's just newspaper, and it won't okay, catch right? it. Yeah. <laughs> all right, I told you it wasn't that the bad was going to happen. There we go. All right. All right. Yeah, you I think about how many safe. lives that might have yeah. saved, all the towns, houses. That was a pretty big invention. Okay guys, it looks like we're done. Why don't we do this? Let's break off, go in to talk a little bit more detail about where all of those techniques were used in this Monocle house. How's that? Good. Okay. Okay. So Mike, nice. what's can, can I look at the board board again? Yes. Anybody? You got a little. <laughs>Well, look, we're standing here in front of this amazing fireplace in the great room at the Monaco. Let's talk about some of the insulation we use in the Monaco. Yeah, and as we mentioned, insulation is so important. It's so important we actually hire a third party to come inspect mm -hmm. our insulation before we cover it with drywall tomorrow. Now, we're going to say the, the R factor a lot when we're talking about insulation. And at Granite Ridge, we use these fiberglass bad insulations. They come in rolls. They come in blankets. Uh, now, the R factor that we used in the Monaco was an R19, and that's because we had two by six walls. Traditionally, we use two by four walls, and we're going to use a mixture of R15 inside the house and R13 out in the garages and down in the basements because we've got to don't heat the garages in the basement. The earth provides a little bit extra insulation for us. So what does R mean in this? <laughs> yeah, so R stands for resistance. Mm. So it's going to be you know, one of those things where the higher number, the greater resistance that it will put for heat to push through that cavity. So again, an R15 we, is a very, very good piece mm -hmm. of insulation, but R19 is going to be better. That two by six wall allows us that little extra depth to get a little bit more insulation in there. Well, we talked a little bit about how it's good, insulation is good to use as a sound barrier. So what would we put like in between the walls here, interior? Yeah, right behind us is the master yes. bedroom. So we've got the great room here, master bedroom here. We wanted to provide an extra layer of soundproofing. Now, with the soundproofing, sound travels through vibration. Mm -hmm. And so we filled that gap with an R11 because we're not really concerned about it resisting heat through mm -hmm. that wall. We're just trying to deaden the sound as it transfers through. So we use an R11 interior sound insulation here, but we also did the floors between each room and then also interior walls, you know, between like a laundry room and a, and a living space. Or my favorite having that, I've got an eight month old baby in the nursery, mm -hmm. surrounding that nursery with as much soundproof as possible because guaranteed my 10 and 11 year old boys are going to come in and start slamming doors and they're going to wake the baby and Absolutely. not going to be happy. We also worry about the floor insulation. That's where the sill sealer comes in. We put it under the borate treated sill plate. Yeah, if you were to look at our exterior walls through a thermal camera, that plate on the bottom is an area that is extremely susceptible to heat loss. So we put in this seal sealer, which provides us a little bit of extra insulation there and seals everything nice and tight. But we take it a couple steps further. We put a bead of silicone underneath that and then we run another bead of silicone on the interior of that plate to make sure that it is completely sealed from air 
and insects. Very good. No bugs, please. Needless to say, this house, the Monaco, is well insulated and will last for a long time. I think most people think you don't have to do anything with a fireplace. So do we need to insulate around this? Yeah, most people when they think insulation automatically think of the outside wall, but there's several areas inside, including the fireplace, that's extremely critical that we have insulation practices in place because we've got a hot box. You turn on that fireplace, it's going to heat up and there's potential of fire. So we need to make sure that we have air gap and air gap can be insulation. Believe it or not, that will create insulation. So we need to make sure there's an air gap. And then there's a pipe behind you. Well, that pipe is double wall. So we're sending the hot air through the middle and bringing in new air from the outside, which then provides us that insulation again from the hot air that could potentially cause a fire. There's some other things we have to do with some drywalls where we transition into the attic to make sure that none of the insulation falls down onto that box. So it is one of the most regulated spots that we have to make sure that everything is spaced and insulated properly. Insulation is providing safety, it's providing uh, energy efficiency, it really it's got a lot of jobs. Lonnie, what are you doing over there? Oh, I'm Don't sorry, eat I'm it. Sorry. That's not sorry. ready wet. I'm spray foaming around the windows. Okay, okay. Well, a key feature of the modern European chateau style home here, we have the Monaco, is its windows. And in this home, we have 110 <sighs> windows. Wow. Now, windows can be a great source of heat, heat loss. So we want to be sure that we are properly insulating around all of these openings. You're right. We have this. Of course, we all look at this and say, that's insulation. But when we look at windows, we also need to say, that's also an insulation factor as well. And we use Anderson windows. We use the 400 series. They are low E, which is low emissiticity, which means when the sun shines, it reflects the sun and bounces it back, bounces it back away from the house. And they're also argon gas filled. And argon is going to absorb the sun in the winter and it's gonna also uh, uh, reflect it in the summer. So it's very important. And these are dual pane windows, dual pane. By the way, this glass is made up in Angola or Fremont. It's called the Cardo glass, and it's an insulated glass. And it's very important that we use windows like Anderson in these new homes. And this is hermetically sealed. It is. And what that means is also is, see this flange around here? That's the nailing flange, and it goes all the way around the window, which is very important. A lot of windows, they don't. And then we use a special tape, and we're going to tape these windows in uh, before we uh, we put the siding on. Now, another key component to our windows and our doors is the header. So we have custom headers above all of these openings that are insulated as well. Right. Now, a lot of people don't think about their garage door. Our garage doors at Granite Ridge Builders are all insulated. So here at the Monaco, we have four overhead doors, and those are all a R12.76. And it doesn't get much better than that as far as insulated garage doors go. And then also, we have garage doors on the lower level as well, right? We have six of those. So those are screens that are going to come down. So this is also going to provide a little bit of insulation as well. So right. it's you gonna... just, yeah, a lot of people don't know the actual screening actually is a form of insulation to the home. And then Lonnie, lastly, are the window blinds. This is really important in a home. This home is going to have the blinds on a remote control. This will also help. It helps with a thermal break. We are here in the master shower of our Monaco home. And for some reason, I keep getting the segments where we have to, I have to be in the shower. So I don't know if they're <laughs> saying I need to take a bath or, or what's going on here, but I actually really do love this space. There's so much to talk about and it's very surprising how much there is to talk about in here. Uh, before we get back to some of the really great shower details, I wanna go into a few specialty items that we did in this home that we can do in any one of our Granite Ridge built homes that really makes a difference on the insulation package. One of them is going to be the exterior wall. We do a spray foam insulation. Now it's going to be an R3.5 additional value. It's a polyurethane a closed cell spray foam. That's very important. It really does help with the sound deadening um, throughout the house from the interior to exterior. Really helps with wind if you're in the country. Um, so it's one of my favorite features for, for some of those reasons. That's right, Kayla. In this, in this space, we have done the spray foam insulation 
on the ceiling of the shower, these exterior walls, but we did it throughout the exterior walls of this entire house. Yep. Now that adds a ton of soundproofing, a ton of insulation factor, and it's really taking the insulation package to the next step on this house. Okay. Now, as you can see behind us here, you can see some blue foam board. With this shower here being on an exterior wall, what we did was we technically built a double wall here. So we really wanted to protect our, our water lines from being able to freeze. So what we did is we sprayed the spray foam on the exterior. Then we did bat insulation in front of that with our visqueen to protect it. Then we did the blue foam board and then we will see our water lines in here as well. So it is very well protected and we will not have any sort of weather issues in here. Yeah, so as a designer, I tend to make it difficult every once in a while, I don't mean to, <laughs> but from a construction standpoint, it is very hard to have plumbing lines on an exterior wall. So that's why it is so important in the shower that we did it right and we have no threat of any pipes freezing. That also goes if you're going to have a shower head in your ceiling and you have maybe a one-story home or you're doing that in the attic space. We want to make sure we frame down that ceiling and we're gonna put blue board above that and then we're gonna have an open air cavity um, below that framing to again, just make sure that there's no threat of any pipes freezing. So that's a few Granite Ridge differences that we make sure we protect your home in those ways. And we don't just protect it from the inside, we're protecting it from the outside as well. We put down a special synthetic wrap mm -hmm. to protect our OSB on the outside. So that will go your siding, the synthetic wrap, then your OSB and then your interior insulation. Yes, and, and throughout the home, a couple ceiling details that make a really important difference are going to be your attic spaces. We do R45, wood fiber cellulose blown in insulation. Which is fire retardant as well. Absolutely, so important. That's gonna be in our attics. We're gonna do 12 inches in our attic space. We also have a five inch blown in um, insulation in the garage attic. That's gonna be an R21 value. Now in our cathedral ceilings, we do put the bat up there because there's not quite as much room for the blown in. Now looking at the shower here, which side is the his shower and which side is the her okay, shower? Okay, okay, okay. Well, we have our steam shower, we have our jets, we have our shower heads, our handheld, so much stuff going on. I cannot wait to see the finished product. It's going to have a full porcelain slab. You can see pictures here, our vision board, and it's gonna come to life sooner than we realize. I cannot wait. Now, Izzy, we've been talking about the Monaco and, and we've heard the stats about, oh, there's 110 windows in here. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about the stats about the insulation. There is 25,000 square foot of wall bat insulation in this home. <laughs> and that's not the only type of insulation, of course, we're using. We're using a lot of spray foam insulation and it's not very heavy, but in this home, there is a literal ton of spray foam insulation. 2,000 pounds, that is amazing. It's a really, really exciting place. And when you start to look around here, you're gonna notice that three out of the four walls in the basement are concrete. So that's eight to 10 inches thick concrete walls that act as an insulator. And that's just a great place to start. Another major factor when we're talking about the insulation in the basement is some of the soundproofing that's here. Mm -hmm. When you look above us, you're gonna see all of this wall bat insulation that's in between. That is gonna really help with the sound reduction, not only from downstairs up, but also from upstairs down. And when you think about it, we got a whiskey room, we've got a <laughs> wine room, we've got a golf simulator. Yep. They're gonna need a little bit of that soundproofing going on in here. Yeah, you're gonna see a wall here that's got five TVs, again, with all the entertainment that's gonna be going on down here. It was a very wise investment to make sure that we did that to try to keep that noise down here. It's going to save a lot of marriages, like I keep saying. If we would do this more often, that way people can play, have fun, and then other people still can relax and sleep. So we've been talking a lot about different insulation that are going on on the inside of the house, but there's also a lot that goes on the outside, including this blue foam board. This is going to be going up with the footers all around the house, all around the slab, all around the garage to help keep that nice and insulated. We're trying to keep that frost from getting anywhere close to the house. And then on the interior here, we've got all of our pipes that are going through, especially, especially any place that is close to the exterior walls. We're gonna make sure that stuff has additional insulation as well. We wanna make sure all of our pipes are nice and insulated. And that's when you look in here, you can see everything that we have in there with that insulation factor. Also appliances. Mm -hmm. Some people think of appliances, they think of refrigerators, they think of stoves. But really when we're talking about appliances in the home, that also includes the water heater, which is also heavily insulated. Mm -hmm. The whole house humidifier in this home place mm -hmm. that is also completely insulated. So with all the appliances being insulated, all the walls, again, keeping the floor separated with insulation, this thing is insulated to a T. It is the most insulation I've ever seen. And we already had those crazy stats. There's just so much to see here, but you're never gonna see it again. 
It's gonna be covered up with drywall and all of a sudden this stuff is here for life to make sure that this house is nice, warm, energy efficient, and no noise. You know, Tony, with so much insulation everywhere, you could almost say it's ubiquitous. <laughs> that's, that's all, folks. I think you mean ubiquitous, meaning all around us. Is that what that's it what is? That's what I said. Hey, everything he says is true. Mia, Mia, that's all, folks. <laughs> <laughs> and the porky pig comes out. Yeah. All right, guys, we got to go ahead and close. I've, I've taken the torch away. It's oh. safe. <laughs> Great idea. So much safer. <laughs> okay, why don't we do this? Why don't we talk a little bit about some of the fun facts and dates maybe that we learned about insulation? I got the first one. What was the first insulation ever discovered? You'll be shocked. Mud. Ooh. The Egyptians. What they did was when they were building their houses out of mud, they figured it had a cooling property. The other one was Vikings. When they would build with log homes, all of their, uh, they had gaps in there. They figured out if they put mud and straw in there, that was an insulating factor. Hmm. The ancient Greeks took insulation also to another level, and they used a product that we call asbestos. Oh. And the word actually means inextinguishable. Hmm. And they thought it had mystic quantities, qualities. And uh, unfortunately, we have learned since that uh, asbestos no. can be very dangerous to your health. If you got it in your house, you got to figure out a way to get it out. And I do have a stud tip for you too, to consider using insulation on some interior areas, whether we, like we spoke before, between like a bedroom and a living space, uh, potentially uh, to uh, put it on the basement floor so you can keep some of those noises from transferring upwards and downwards between those floors. And sometimes of the people who even consider putting it around a guest bathroom, <laughs> the people have a little bit more ease when they go to the bathroom. I wonder why, Terry. <laughs> Man, you just can't get that episode out of your mind, can you? <laughs> And then keep in mind, if by chance your insulation gets wet, uh, Kayla, our basement just flooded, so we're gonna have to pull out some insulation and replace that. So if your insulation gets wet, it is no longer viable. It is no longer usable. It's disgusting. You might as well just throw it away. Luke, is that true with drywall too? Yeah, true with drywall. So mm -hmm. both of those have to go. They just will not work with wet. You know, you can save 20 to 40% in your energy bills by having good insulation. Definitely worth it, because you're not wasting any energy either. Another stud tip, be sure any crack, hole, gap is insulated properly. This will save you money as well in the long run. Yeah, and another tip, a properly installed insulation piece will last the life of a home, but the blown-in insulation that's up in probably most of your attics will over time start to settle. Gravity will work on it. It'll start to compress. So you'll lose some of your insulation factor, your R factor as we call it. Uh, so having somebody come in and blow some extra insulation in there can save you a lot from that utility bill. And please, please, please do not be like Mike. If you are dealing with fiberglass, <laughs> if you're dealing with fiberglass insulation, Make sure you have long sleeves, long pants, and a mask to protect your skin and lungs from the fiberglass. Good tip of the day. Don't be like <laughs> Mike. <laughs> okay, Kayla, time's getting away. Would you close for us? Thank you all so much for joining us today. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about who we are, what we do, and why we do what we do so well, please pick up the phone and give us a call. Visit our website, or even better yet, come in our front door. We would love to talk to you all about building your new home. Don't be like Mike. The laundry one tastes better, insulation or the spray foam? Uh, the spray foam. The spray foam. <laughs> Famous got into your head. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't even changed you. <laughs> well, let's give a quick recap on where we've come so far. What is the deal? <laughs> it's charity. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Okay. We didn't even say duty call. <laughs> oh, did you have to do that? <laughs> uh. We might as well take a five minute break. Yeah, yeah. Right. Plus, the Vikings used to build with logs. They had Sorry. gaps. So they figured out if they put mud and straw there, have to that was the first right. insulation, and I just did so good. Oh, I'm, not I'm so sorry. That was the insulation in my nose. All right. You should have let it out, so then we could have said, yeah, we, told you, Mike, we yeah. told you. Should we start over? Yeah. We better start over. My fault. Oops.